Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be going over three scenarios that I encounter all the time that make the open telemetry collector exceptionally useful. Uh, the open telemetry collector is something that I think everybody who is adopting open telemetry should consider using. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The last thing I'll say before that is that my name is Forrest. I've been here around two years, have a background in full stack engineering, and I've spoken with literally thousands of engineers. So if you have a situation that you think is special, uh, it probably isn't, but either way, I would love to meet with you and talk to you about your observability needs. Uh, you can reach me. My email is forest at lightstep.com. Let's jump in. So let's first just do a quick little refresher on what the OTEL collector is. It's just a pipeline tool. We'll draw a, a super simple distributed system. Let's say we have some service A, some service B, uh, some service C, and some service D, right? And let's say they have a relationship like this, right? Uh, data goes back and forth, whatever. We have our backend system, and then we have some service F, which is our front end, which sends request to our gateway, which is service C. So this is our distributed system. Uh, pretty simple, real distributed systems. Each of these services would be horizontally scaled, maybe deployed in different regions, things like that. When we run the open telemetry collector, we, we might run it as a sidecar, right? As an agent where each one of these services essentially has an open telemetry collector adjacent to it, right? And then all of these little collectors could be sending this data to a big collector which we'll call hotel collector over here. And it'll have some set of properties, right? So it has some receivers. I apologize for my handwriting. Uh, it will have some exporters and it will have what we'll just call some pipelines. Okay. So reason number one, uh, really scenario number one, why you'd want to use the hotel collector really is shown here, right? So service A and service B could be emitting telemetry in a few different formats. We could call this proprietary one, call this proprietary two. So receive his job to take that data, turn it into the hotel collector's internal format uh, to prep it for export. Then from there, we can do a ton of things. You might be already sending that data to, uh, let's say Jaeger. Right, so I'm sending the data to Jaeger. And if I want to add a new location, add another vendor such as Lightstep, because I, I now want to not just look at my data using Jaeger, uh, but now analyze my data and generate insights from it so that I can reduce MTTR, my teams can work better together. Uh, many of the things that you know all of our customers have done, uh, we serve some of the largest, uh, I'd say services uh, in the world, uh, software that we all use every day, right, are our, our customers. Uh, doing that is super simple. I can just add an exporter. Uh, and to do that, to send your data to LightStep, you actually can just use the OTLP format, which is just the open source format. So there's no LightStep exporter. We're fully open source just by using the out of the box export, which is OTLP. We'll kind of just denote that, which is out uh, of the box. Uh, send the endpoint, set the endpoint to ingest.lightstep.com. Make sure you have an account first and you're basically done. So you're just adding a few lines to a configuration separate from your services to get your data to a new endpoint. So that's great. It's super simple. That's scenario number one. And kind of just to clean this up, I'll show what that kind of would look like. So if I erase some of this kind of note annotation, what it would actually look like is I have an exporter section. I would add OTLP, right? I would add an endpoint here. This would be ingest.lightstep.com. Uh, and we actually have an access token. So you would add some headers, right? And the header you would set is, you know, I'll just do lightstep access token abbreviation. And this would be, you know, some string. That's it. So you add this block 
and you're done. You don't have to change your services, the engineers, there's zero work on the engineering teams who are developing these services. Um, there's a, a little overhead to the person who is managing your pipeline, right? But really anybody can do this work, right? This work right here can be done by anyone because it's so simple uh, and it's not really going to affect anything else. Open Telemetry Collector is designed to export data to multiple backends. So that is scenario number one is sending data to a new backend uh, pretty simply. Okay, so scenario number two is kind of similar to scenario number one in that you want to do some proprietary analysis. So if I want to store data in addition to analyzing it, I'll have my open telemetry collector, right? I have uh, an exporter, but look at my exporters. I'm sending it to Jaeger, right? Sending it to Lightstep. Now I want to send it to, you know, some bucket. So what are reasons why you would do this? Well, from what I've seen, right, working with companies in many different verticals, uh, you could have compliance, right, either current or uh, future compliance. If suddenly the compliance arm of your organization says, hey, we actually need to store uh, this data for the next 10 years, well, that's not something that is necessarily best, uh, you know, used for Lightstep, right? We are the best platform for helping you understand the performance of your distributed systems and doing root cause analysis on those systems. But if you just need to store a bunch of data so that you can look up some individual number, you know, eight years from now, that's not an observability use case, that's more of an audit use case. Uh, and the Otel Collector makes that super simple. Without this, what you end up doing is managing proprietary pipelines where you're sending data to your vendor, you then have some pipeline to send data to your long-term storage. It's not standard, the formats are likely different, and now you are in the business of managing and engineering data pipelines, which is something that you do not want to do. OpenTelemetry literally exists so that you do not have to do that. Uh, I guarantee you, you will be reinventing many wills. Uh, it won't be fun for the people who are working on it, and it will just be a drain on your engineering organization. But let's get back into something more positive, and that is scenario number three, which is actually truly a different scenario. And that is uh, doing CRUD on this data in transit, right? So imagine I'm an engineer. Uh, I own service C on the left side of the screen here. I've developed it. I've done whatever. And then someone says, Force, we want to add attributes for the geolocation that the service is deployed in. Uh, so that we can use that in light stuff. We want to be able to slice and dice our data based off of the geography. There's a few ways that we could do that. I could either dynamically with instrumentation add that to the service and it could go and fetch some information about its environment if we're passing that or making that available to the service at runtime. A better way to do that though, or a different way, uh, which I think is better, would be to do that at the collector level itself. So if we have service C here, service C here, service C here, and these are actually segmented into different you know, geographies and where service F could be doing this, right? Uh, to different uh, instances of service Cs in different geographic locations or whatever the you know, way you're deploying your data is. In our collector, we go back to our collector config, we can now use something called a span processor. Span processors are great because we can do all types of CRUD to our data. So instead of me as the engineer having to worry about where my application is deployed necessarily, the person who is taking my application and is adding all these different layers to it, depending on how it needs to be containerized and deployed, uh, they know where it's going. And the Otel collector specifically knows, you know, really where it is and where that data is coming from. So if I have an Otel collector in a different region, for every span that comes in, I could just say, add some attribute, right? And that attribute could be the geography that I'm in. I could remove some attribute, right? Let's just say that that compliance part of my organization comes again and says, hey, we want to remove all data that looks like this. Well, super simple to do at the collector we can transform an attribute. Data, ob 
obfuscation, classic use case, we can do this at the collector layer. So you are not mucking up your application code, right? You can deal with the data in a format that makes sense where it is, and then obfuscate it later, actually in a different tire layer. And you can actually do that in your telemetry layer itself in one collector. And because you can use collectors themselves in layers, right? We see we have these hotel collectors running close to our services. We can obfuscate the data there. We can obfuscate the data at this general collector layer. There's tons of ways to do it, but the hotel collector is designed for this. The collector is your pipeline tool. So when you're thinking about data pipelines, you're thinking about how do I transform my data, modify it, get it to different backends, batch it, do whatever. Look at the hotel collector. It was designed for this. Uh, if you have other use cases or questions of what the open telemetry collector could be used for, definitely do reach out to me or anyone at LightStep. We are one of the co-founders of open telemetry. We have a ton of knowledge in this space. If you found this useful, please do hit the subscribe button. Check out our other videos. We have tons of content related to open telemetry, observability, our thoughts, uh, our thought leadership in this space. Uh, and they're all things that I think you could find useful. In any case, I appreciate you taking time to watch this and I will see you in the next one.